NA1SF, this is W5 Romeo, 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 go ahead. November Alpha 1, Sierra Sierra, this is Whiskey 5 Romeo, 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 do you copy? Over. Whiskey 5 Romeo, 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 I've got you loud and clear, help me. You are loud and clear. Uh, Space Camp Turkey, please proceed with your questions. My name is Dennis. What does a lunch feel like? Over. Well, the launch on a Soyuz rocket is actually very smooth. We feel a smooth acceleration until the force is built up on our bodies until the engine cuts off and then we instantaneously feel like we're turned upside down as we experience microgravity for the first time. My name is Ege. How long did you have to train before you actually flew to space over? Training for a space flight actually takes several years. When you're initially selected as an astronaut, we actually train for two years before we're qualified to be assigned to a mission. And then when we're assigned to a specific mission, there's another two years of training before we actually launch. So it's almost four years of training before you would be ready to, for an ISS mission. My name is Demi. What changes did you feel in your body as a result of microgravity? Over. For the first several days, we feel a little bit disoriented, maybe sometimes feel a little bit nauseous or sick even, um, but then our bodies adapt very quickly. One of the sensations that we all feel because of our, uh, because the way our blood shifts to our heads uh, in the absence of gravity, sometimes we feel like we have a little bit of a full head, kind of like we have a little bit of a cold. My name is Ada. What do you do when you aren't on a space mission? Over. Well, when we're not in space or we're on the ground, our job is to either support space missions that are going on, so yeah, astronauts sometimes work in mission control, talking to astronauts from the ground, or we have technical jobs where we use our expertise to assist in development of new technologies for space flight, uh, and we're constantly training, we're constantly keeping our skills so that we're ready for the next time we're assigned to a space mission. My name is Daphne. What is the coolest thing you have seen while on the space station? Over. It would be hard to pick just one thing that I would consider the coolest, but definitely looking back at the Earth, and uh, I have found that night time, fly, uh, flying over the um, Earth at night and looking down at city lights and picking out geography. In particular, I enjoy flying over the Mediterranean and the Middle East and parts of Africa because they're just so beautiful and the skies are almost always clear so you can always make something out on the ground. My name is Denis Kankocak. How would sneezing be different in weightlessness over? Well, in general, I have found that weightlessness feels about the same as it does, uh, or excuse me, that sneezing feels about the same as it uh, does on Earth. Uh, now, if I sneezed while I wasn't uh, holding on to anything, I, it might cause me to move a little bit, um, but otherwise, sneezing is just about the same as on the Earth. My name is Zeynep. Do we age faster in space? Over. Well, that's a great question that I don't think we know fully uh, whether we understand that. I think that we have seen some evidence that the biological or physiological aging does occur a little bit faster uh, in space, uh, but uh, I think it's still a question that we don't fully understand yet. My name is Celine. What is the most interesting thing about the Artemis mission? Over. Well, as you probably have been studying, we haven't been back uh, as human beings to the moon in 50 years. And so the Artemis mission has a number of things that are interesting and unique about it. One is that uh, our intent is to go back as part of an international partnership, much like the ISS is an international partnership. Uh, and also to go back for a more sustained presence, whereas the Apollo missions were very brief, short 
days, just a couple of days, just the, uh, the entire mission itself. These will be much longer, and that we will eventually have a station uh, called Gateway that will be in orbit around the moon that will allow us to uh, have a more sustained presence in lunar orbit and eventually on the surface of the moon. My name is Onur. Does your appetite change in space? Over. I would say that some astronauts describe that they don't feel as hungry in space um, because a variety of things change in our bodies physiologically and one of those, uh, in the absence of gravity, I think it just affects the way that our, our stomachs feel and we don't get this uh, sense maybe that we are as full um, and as a consequence, some people do feel like they have to really force themselves to eat. I found that my appetite is about the same up here as it is on the ground. Uh, but we do pay attention to what we eat because keeping food in our bodies, giving our bodies energy is very important to keeping us healthy in microgravity over a long period of time. My name is Duro. When you were younger, did you think about becoming an astronaut in the future? Over. I definitely did around the age of uh, 10 years old and uh, I grew up at the time that the space shuttle was flying often and I was definitely inspired by that and there was still much to talk about the Apollo astronauts and they were definitely heroes uh, to us growing up but uh, I pursued a career in the military initially uh, because I knew that was something I could definitely accomplish and it was something that I was interested in. Um, so the seed for becoming an astronaut was planted very early in my life, but uh, I chose to follow a very different path to become a military doctor. Hello, my name's Aras. Can you hear any sound in space? Over. Well, we're in, when we're inside the International Space Station, sound is exactly the way it, you would expect it to be on Earth because we have an uh, atmosphere here and there are ways that we uh, can conduct sound because we do have air inside the, uh, uh, the ISS. If we were outside, uh, I'm wear usually wearing a spacesuit, well, I'm always wearing a spacesuit, and uh, so we can hear the sounds inside the spacesuit, but if we could theoretically be outside um, in the vacuum of space, which wouldn't be possible to be alive, of course, but uh, there was, is no atmosphere, no, no molecules to transmit sound in the vacuum of space. Hello, my name is Nehesh. Do you ever feel like you're upside down in space? Over. Uh, have that upside down sensation when we initially experience microgravity and for the first couple hours, first couple of days, they're, we're a little bit disoriented and it uh, can be very confusing to be upside down or sideways, uh, but after a couple of days, your body really adapts very quickly and now I've been up here for eight months and I have no sense of uh, upside down. If I were to walk on the ceiling, it would feel exactly like I was walking on the floor. My name is Utku. Who controls the space station orders? Well, the International Space Station is controlled from control centers all over the world. The primary control center is at Mission Control Houston, but there's also a mission control in Moscow, uh, one near Tokyo, Japan, and one near Munich, Germany, and they all have a different role and they come together to fly the station and they pay attention to all the systems that are on board so that the astronauts on board, that my, the crew and I, can do the work on board the space station and not worry too much about what's going on uh, with the systems. But we do do, and we do interact with it, but for the most part, Mission Control watches it for us. My name is Jen. What does space smell like? Over. But the only way that we're able to smell what space smells like is when something from, comes from outside of the space station and we bring it into the airlock. So when we go on a spacewalk and we come in, the spacesuits definitely have a smell. And I've heard it described all different ways, but it's hard to uh, put it into words. But yeah, we think that it is the smell of the materials and how they interact with the vacuum and the harsh environment of space. 
My name is Ella. What are the three things that you missed back on Earth? Over. I would say that I miss my family the most. I miss the uh, color of, of green vegetation, and I miss taking a shower. My name is Daphnella. How do you grow up? Vegetables and fruit. In space, over. Yes, earlier this fall, for a couple of weeks, we did grow a type of lettuce very successfully. Um, that we were actually able to eat. It was an experience, or an experiment called veggie, and um, we are looking at ways uh, that we can create an, an artificial environment to grow food on a long duration space flight. Uh, this is W5RRR. Um, the station has passed over the horizon at this point. Uh, this is W5RRR clear. Okay, thank you, uh, Mike and Jeff. Uh, so, congrats to um, the Izmir team. So we were able to uh, put 16 questions, and we also got the answer from 60 for 60 questions. So, uh, Riva, a microphone to you. Yes, uh, we were very, uh, very excited to, to be able to participate in our first Eras contact since uh, 2011, as Mike mentioned. And uh, thank you, uh, Peter, for your assistance with uh, helping walk us through this. Uh, thank you very much. This is Peter Kofla, and I'm a radio operator, India November 3 Gulf Hotel Zulu in Bozen, Northern Italy. Sending my greetings to all of you in amateur radio terms, 73s, which means best wishes, and bye-bye. Thank you from Space Camp.